There are many ease of access tools that I think anyone can and should use from time to time, if not more frequently. I know that one challenge I have, especially when I get tired or I'm in a hurry, is that my typing tends to get worse and worse. Sometimes I sit back in my chair and wish it was the good old days of dictation, where I could just talk to my secretary, now called an admin, and he or she would simply write down everything I had to say. Now, I do a lot of work transferring old family stories and historic documents to electronic format. I also do a lot of technical and fictional writing. When those works are mostly narrative text, it would be much easier just to be able to speak what I want to type instead of actually typing it all out. Trust me, I can speak much more accurately and much more quickly than I can type it. Well, you know what? That's exactly what we can do, right from Windows. It's called speech recognition. And while it does take a few minutes to train it and turn it on, it's a fabulous, invaluable tool, in my opinion, that's been greatly underutilized for many years. The first step, of course, is to enable speech. We can do that by simply searching for speech. So from the start screen, that's what we'll type. There is only one result that comes up, and it says Windows Speech Recognition. We'll go ahead and give that a click or a tap. The first time we turn it on, our only option is to go through a short setup process. This is necessary because speech recognition requires use of a microphone, and the microphone must be properly configured. This is the wizard that comes up, and we'll go ahead and start to work through it, although we're probably not going to work through the entire training process. We can read the information and then click or tap Next. It wants to know what type of microphone we have and it should identify whatever microphone you currently have plugged in. What we need to do is tell it what type it is. Is it a headset? Is it a desktop? Or is it something else, like an array microphone? Mine happens to be a desktop microphone. We make that selection and click or tap Next. It then gives us a little bit of information about the best way to position the mic. We'll click Next to get through that. And now it wants to make sure that it can hear us, so we would need to read a sentence. What we're doing is looking at the indicator at the bottom of the screen to make sure that it does not enter into the red area. That would be too noisy. So here we go. Peter dictates to his computer. He prefers it to typing and particularly prefers it to pen and paper. That's it. It tells us that the microphone is set up and it's ready to use. So we'll click next one more time. What comes next is a series of questions designed to help us make the accuracy of voice recognition better. Document review is a fairly new feature, and it's an option that enables speech recognition to go look at all of our documents and emails that have been set to be indexed for searching, and it tries to figure out what types of things we write about most often. That's because the words and phrases that we use in documents and email are important for it to understand so it can more correctly identify them. If I'm a physician, for example, and I use the word catatonic, it would be very frustrating to me if speech recognition always tried to identify it as cat and tonic instead. So we have the choice to allow it to look at these documents or not. This was an amazing addition for me because I do work with a lot of highly specific terminology in my various capacities. Normally, I'd recommend allowing it, since it is by far the easiest way to get it up to speed on proprietary terminology that we use regularly. Normally, I would enable it, but since we're in training, I'm going to disable it for our purposes here. Once that's done, we'll click on Next. The next screen asks us about how we want to activate speech recognition. Do we want to manually enable it each time we need to, or do we want to use its own service and be able to turn it on or off with a simple voice command? Voice activation allows us to simply say things like start listening when we want to use it and stop listening when we're done. This is instead of having to fumble through actual buttons and settings. We'll go ahead and make that selection to go ahead and use its own service. Then we'll click or tap next again. There is a speech reference card that will give you all kinds of little shortcuts and tips on how to control a computer and make it understand what we want it to do beyond just being able to speak and have it take dictation. We can also choose if we want this to start automatically. Again, I would normally leave that on, but in this case, I'm going to turn it off. And now it lets us know that we're ready to go. What I'm going to do is go ahead and start the tutorial, but I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing. I just want to show you how it works. This is a brand new, fully revised speech tutorial, and I'm going to click or tap Next 
to go ahead and work through it. It's going to take us through the basics, different commands, dictation, and even working with Windows, and then a conclusion. It's really worthwhile to spend some time looking at it, even if you've used the speech recognition before. As I promised, though, we're not going to sit through this, so I'm going to go ahead and just close out this window. When we finish the tutorial, it'll take us back to our normal desktop, and it will actually show us the speech recognition toolbar. This is the one that you'll use when you want to work with speech recognition. And you can see it's even telling us currently it's sleeping, but it also tells us how to enable it when we're ready to use it. After we've done our initial setup and tutorial, we may want to train speech recognition so that it better understands us, our voice, and our way of speaking. This helps increase accuracy. If we allow the use of document review that we mentioned earlier, and if we go through this short training process, we will get much better results with fewer errors as we begin using the system. To get to any of the things that we've done thus far, we need to open the speech recognition options, probably through the control panel or by simply using search. When the speech recognition dialog opens, we need to notice that there are different options here. Some of them are ones that we've already been through, like starting speech recognition and setting up the microphone. We can also return to the tutorial here if we didn't finish it the first time and look at the speech reference card. The part that we skipped over is the ability to train the computer, and that's the last part I want to show you. We'll click on the link that says train your computer to better understand you. Again, I'll try to make this as short and sweet as possible. You're welcome to read all of this when you go through it on your own. But we're going to continue to click Next until it's ready to work. All it wants us to do is to read what we see on screen. I am now speaking to my computer. The computer is learning the sound of my voice as I speak. This will help the computer better recognize what I say. Now I'm going to go ahead and cancel out because you don't need to go through the whole thing. But the point of this whole process is that we need to speak the way we normally speak. Don't slow down, don't speak louder, don't accentuate words oddly. Because what we want is the computer to understand how we speak with a normal voice so that it can learn to understand us better. Once we do that, the accuracy of speech recognition, kind of like the accuracy of OCR, will become much better. In addition, as we continue to use speech recognition, it learns. When we make corrections, it learns how we spoke the word that it misunderstood, and it probably won't make the error again. We can use speech recognition to do things like dictation. For example, we can open WordPad and just speak what we want to say in a letter, but we can also use it to control our computer. And those are some of the commands that we need to learn by looking at that reference card and going through the tutorial. I absolutely love speech recognition. I've used it for a lot of years. Originally, I played a bit with another third-party software program that actually is very popular and it's very good. But I found that the speech recognition features in Windows does everything that I need it to and more. And it comes with my computer. I don't have to buy anything extra. I don't have to manage any other software. So if you haven't done so already, try it out. I think you might just like it.